I don't want to do this shit. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> I, I now detest this podcast. My name is Luke Thomas. This is Brian Campbell. Yes. And this is Room Service Diaries, where we have... A podcast where we drink a few, and then we record our thoughts, and we just kind of roll the dice and see what happens next. Yes, right? we just wait to see which one of our superiors is calling us to tell us. Yes. That but it is Canelo mistake. Plant Fight Week. I brought broadcasting voice back. Um, and we've been on the ground in the midst of that stuff doing UFC previewing, Canelo previewing. And we've had some cool experiences this week. By the way, this is my eighth day in Las Vegas, which <laughs> <laughs> my skin's just falling off. Like, I mean, just my eyes have changed color. It's just, it's, yeah. yeah. Dude, your, your liver has no prayer here. My God, this place is... I don't know how people elect to come. I get dragged here. I don't know how people elect well, don't, to don't, come. Well, don't don't cry like, uh, you know, they make me do this. But, I mean, you know, it's a pretty good job. <laughs> no, the job. Oh, as an occupation? That's what I mean. As an occupation, it's wonderful. Uh, but why people would like, I don't know. Las Vegas is just not, it's not for me. Is, you like Las Vegas? No, not, <laughs> not even at no. all. Um, but here's the deal, though. I think the coolest moment was today, Friday, the weigh-in, when you, me, and Paul Pierce... Did like 26 minutes of good shit, right? I thought it came out pretty good. I thought I didn't say the basketball. That was that nice. was good. That was very that was, good. That was I mean, movement. he wasn't trying to like find out where we're hanging out later in the night. No. Like that wasn't part of that. I know. BC was like, "Do you think he's gonna want to hang out?" Well, later? I didn't really <laughs> say it like that, but I was thinking that. And I was like, uh, "I don't," you know. He didn't like say hit him up and we were done. We didn't become Instagram buddies, so. Yeah, maybe next time. But he was friendly. He was, great. He was super friendly. A new newest member of the Showtime Digital family. So uh, it'd be cool seeing him mix in with uh, and telling fun NBA stories. I liked picking his brain. He he played ball with us. That was good. Um, I'm never. Uh, by the way, I, he was live on Instagram, which I know you know there's a story behind. But like, uh, I don't. Are you a person who ever goes live on Instagram? No, I'm. I, think, ne- I never go live. I think on I'm Instagram. too old for that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess there's a rule. Well, he's older than us, but he's a celebrity and he's cool. So there's a different thing, but. He was going live the whole time and like talking to fans and whatnot, and I, I just had never seen that in the wild. Because we still, except for like you know, because we still come from the pre-phone and internet era, mm-hmm. we're savvy enough to know how to use it for our advantage because it, it, we came of age with the technology. But we also remember what it used to be like enough that we all sort of set our own lines of like, okay. I can't not learn this shit because I need it for work. But some of this other shit, like TikTok or like, uh, you know, I, I, it's just not for me, and that's okay. And I and I think I'm I'm content moving forward, never having that. Shit. I, I think I told you the story. I always reference this fight because a I haven't been to that all that many boxing fights, and b it was it was just very foundational for me. But I'll never forget the the first sort of like, you know, big is an interesting definition. But the first big fight to me that I covered in boxing, um, no, that's actually not true. Foundationally, just the one at home. It was Lamont Peterson and Amir Khan, yes, which was on HBO at the time, and uh, I'll never forget that I had been covering UFC for and MMA for some time, and uh, this was my first like real presser, and like the ambassador from England was there. It was like a to do, and there was a scrum afterwards with Amir, and I'll never forget there were multiple boxing reports. Dude, it like blew my mind when I fucking saw this. I was like, whoa, holy shit. That had manual tape recorders. Oh yeah, they still manual use. tape recorders, and I was like, "Dude, I didn't realize how far advanced at that time MMA media was in terms of sort of technological savviness and best practices." Yeah, I took that one for granted. Holy yeah. shit, dude! A lot Holy of those shit. guys still working in boxing media because you know it's, it is a lifelong obsession if you let it, and I've let it. All right. Yeah. It's a dirty whore boxing, right? I mean, just wow, yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. So one of the things you did while you were here, and you yes. saved it for this podcast. Some would actually, say the only thing I've done outside of, like, work and just laying on the bed staring at the ceiling is, is this, right? <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so let's get to this, because I'm so glad you did this, and I'm so glad we brought this up. Um, okay, you saw Dune. The new movie, Dune. In IMAX. Okay, in IMAX. Which is badass. How many other people were in the theater? About eight. <laughs> Spread out. You know? How many were inappropriately touching themselves <laughs> other than you? None, none. Okay, 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 okay. The only thing that was weird, though, it was at the theaters here that has, like, every type of theater. Like, there's the IMAX one, there's the Dolby Surround one, there's the whatever yeah. one. And so I was expecting them to have, like, great seats, you know, and, like, the basic basic beds that you get nowadays. Yeah, yeah. It was just this recliner that only I've just... not done the big reclining ones oh. yet. I hear, I hear it's like a magical experience. It is, it is pretty... Okay. I, need... I mean, it's basically like being on your couch. It's yeah, yeah. fantastic. I need to do it. Okay, with the, all right. Like with the waiter, too. Now, let's back shit. up a step. Did you... Are you... 
Did you read the books or anything? Yeah, so I've never read the books. Me neither. And although I did not see the original movie, this is weird. I've never seen it and still haven't. Didn't even know the original. I was original. all over it being launched because that was right when I got HBO as How a kid. Dude, so I think I was, already got bed was, bugs in this fucking hotel. And what HBO used to do <laughs> was movies it. that were in the theater at the time, HBO would have like these 15 minute sort of behind the scenes things yep. on them because they were coming to HBO in like, you know, six months to get you ready for them. Yeah. And I watched all that shit on Dune and it was like, is this going to be like the new okay, Star okay. Wars? All right. And, okay, I got a lot so, of things to all say. Alright, so let's, let's do this first. Overall impressions. What grade do you give Dune? Okay, um, you know how much people say I overrate 1917, my favorite movie, because the cinematography just was off the, the charts. The cinematography. The, ci the cinematography. The cinematography. Uh, it is just off the, the charts. The ivermectin. Mixed with that just so many moments of, you know, like sheer panic when you watch it. I mean, it's just, it's a wild ride, like Uncut Gems, okay? Okay. Um, so the, I'm into that now, and this cinematically, Dune, is, especially in IMAX, is a... It's a fucking trip. It is. It's badass. Okay. I mean, it, they win. That's an A plus 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 on that side of it. It's the story side of it that doesn't suck. It doesn't make it a bad movie. It's just that, like, you know, the the shots are through the roof. The story kind of levels out at a certain point. But I want to get back into actual Dune. But here's the the real revelation here. And I'm a Star Wars guy like you, but I'm like an old school like Episode Four like watched it five million times on VHS type of old school, and. When I watch Dune, I'm like, you know, this is this is um, it's pretty good. It is a poor man Star Wars. It is second rate, <laughs> but you know what? It's it's really good. And um, you know, man, they stole a lot of shit from Star Wars. I'll tell you that much. And then you go back and you're like, oh wait, the book Dune came out 12 years before Lucas put out the first Star Wars. Yo, Lucas stole the shit out of Star Wars from Dune. Probably. No, not probably. Is that like a, is that a thing? Is that a well? I, dude, I've put z I, the only thing I know about Dune is what I saw on HBO okay. Max for like two and a half hours. I always it. thought I know it, nothing else about Dune. When Star Wars hit and then uh, Empire Strikes Back, there were copycats right away because it was like, oh, this is the new yes. genre. You know, Luke, remember? Yeah, right, right. Remember, um, uh, Ice Pirates. <laughs> it was like a comedy, but kind of Star Warsy. Uh, no, BC, I don't remember Ice Pirates. That's uh, an old school uh, '80s movie. So I just assumed that they had ripped it off, dude. Lucas stole fucking Dune. I'm not even kidding. There's so dude, many what, things across all, the board, I know. and all these and assholes think they're fucking geniuses. So later I read this in life. interview with Lucas from 1978. So it's a year after, right? Yeah. The, and uh, and he said the only thing similar between Dune and Star Wars is that they're set in a desert. No, bro. Uh, no. no, you stole the entire idea, the characters, the setting, the, like... Also, both of them have this, like, uh, faint whiff of British royal... Yes. ...sort of aristocratic life. And both have and, this... Because there's, there's Jedi knights. There's the... Ha in, in Star Wars, there's the house of whatever in Doom. And the only difference seems is that Jedi is looked at as, like, a more pure religion, where the Jedi equivalent in Dune is a lot darker. It's basically, like... Mixing the bloodlines of like also, witchcraft with um, okay, but I, Dune is a more Dune is a serious attempt at a movie beyond just cinematography. Yes, the plot is not too. I agree with your assessment of the plot, but like, dude, Star Wars is, you know, it's, I love Star Wars, but a lot of Star Wars is robots and laser shoot or lo <laughs> robots in space shooting lasers, and it's just nerds fucking popping pimples and. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know. that was very Colby coming to the <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I mean, dude, a bunch of virgins. Listen, I, I, it's a little bit true. I mean, stereotypes are bad because they're overly, you know, and mostly false, but not like a hundred percent. A little bit of Star Wars has that going on. Uh, this one tries to be a little bit more serious with it. I mean, I, it's long as shit. It's it's, it's, it's unnecessarily super long. Super fucking long. Where sometimes movies that length, you're just like, oh, they nailed it. This was unnecessary. It's a lot of slow motion with with, yeah. with the wind going in one direction and but everyone's the, the, hair flowing. And there's there's some great scenes though. And dude, I can't. Well, I don't want to move past it. Luke, George Lucas stole the shit out of this, and you're okay with it. You're just I'm like, not really okay. That's just life, yo, dude. Fuck George he, Lucas, bro. He, he, you realize what he did with episodes one to three? You already know what he did to us, and now you find out this on top of dude, it. Dude, this is I, this is actually the least surprising thing about Star Wars I've ever heard. That actually makes the most. No, this sense. is the most egregious. Anti oh, it's an egregiously Lucas. awful thing, but it actually makes a lot and of. And I sense. know there's probably a lot of super nerds out there, Luke, that are like, "How'd you guys not know that?" I didn't know that. I knew about Dune. Never saw okay, the original. Can we talk about Dune? The original was a bust, though, right? Big time I, I, bust. Which one? Dune? When Dune hit the theaters, it lost a shitload of money. What year are we talking about? 84. Oh, I have no, I, dude, I know nothing about that episode of the, the okay. Dune's existence. I'm really sorry to bother you on your own show here, Luke. Why don't you just take over? It's our know? show. Yeah. Cocksucker. Number one. Um, okay. Any actors stand out 
to you in this one. I thought they were pretty strong acting performances. You know? I thought so too. Um, I wanted to hate the prince. He's a, he's kind of a badass. He's cool. Uh, he's cool. Like, no, like, he will be a badass. He, yeah, is what I'm saying. He's got yeah. potential. He's not yeah. like dude. Like you ever watch Walking Dead? No. There was this fucking teen in there. I could not wait for the zombies to kill this piece of shit. Okay. This okay. impudent little child, who was dude, his dad. Dude, his dad like went went crazy basically. I mean, over several different rounds of lives. And his shithead son <laughs> did nothing but cry, fuck up everyone's plans, complain, get people killed. And I'm like, dude, when yeah. are the zombies going to eat this like, piece of shit? So it's like Chavez Jr., who we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strong Chavez yeah. Jr. Yeah. vibes. I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? Uh, and uh, finally, he got his comeuppance, but I had checked out on the show by that point. Uh, this kid... I did not feel that way. I don't know who the actor is, um, but he was pretty good. He was good, yeah. i tell you who stood out for me. Oh, hold on a second. Time out. Spoilers are about to hit. So if you don't want any Dune spoilers, five, four, oh, well, like, three, please, please. two. Okay. Just, could these fucking assholes send me hate mail. That was a really low... Dude, like, people call you low life. It's like, dude, I didn't mug someone's grandmother. <laughs> I just talked about the fucking walking dead. Okay, whatever. Um, the, the queen mother... Yeah. Of that weird religion, yeah. You that, know, that, that, Jedi I, well, cult I think we thing. learned as that went on. It was that was the darkness. That was the sh- that yeah. was, that's, the Sith Lords. That's of the you Sith know Lord. who. That's the dark side, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. But she, her, the woman who played that that character, she kind of played the shit out of fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so was um, the mother. What who? What was the famous actress who played the? I don't recall. I know. Who, I I remembered her face, but I couldn't quite place her. I, she's, well, a, the cast. she's a British actress, and she uh, she was she good. Was fantastic. She she thread the needle um, because you, pretty so well. At times you hated her, and then at times she was like a heroine. Aquaman. What's that? What's that guy's name? What's Aquaman's name? I don't know. I mean, I'm not that nerdy. All right. The guy I, who plays Aquaman. I, Jason I, I, Momoa. Jason Momoa. You, dude, you love superhero movies, <laughs> and you love. Uh, Animated kids movies that have a Latin theme. I mean, let's let's be real honest here, all right? Dude, Aquaman is a superhero movie. Yeah, I know. I don't watch that shit, all right? Uh, oh, I'm so- oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were too busy banging the prom queen on your off time. Yo, I loved it. Just Captain like America, Who the just fuck like you think the time are? we called out. You're James, a dirtbag loser, like with the rest of us. Just like the time we called out James Gallagher on camera about like people blowing, you know, like chicks and stuff. He's like, Yo, my girlfriend's over there. Um, yo, you <laughs> totally tried to call Paul Pierce today about the two phones too. Yeah, he had two phones. And I was like, you got two phones, huh? He goes, what, would, what did he say to me? I don't remember what he said. It was sl- whatever he said, it, it was, was the, smooth. It, it was, was the, like... Yeah, it was the equivalent of... He said it was smoothly, but it was the equivalent of something like someone at my level has to. You know, something like that. It was something along those lines. I remember thinking, oh, okay, I fair, see that's you. a fair point. I, I don't, that's the truth right I, there. I see you. Yes. I don't know what it means to be that famous. Fair yes. enough, fair enough. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to Dune. Uh Jason Momoa was cool. The technology was interesting. Who's Jason Momoa? Is he like that badass? He was the, he was the guy who was like was, the knight. He was like the rock or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I say that because he looked like he was like Polynesian he, badass. He went out in the blaze killing all of those yeah, he donks. Was, uh, he was good in that. Um, the technology was, a, the science fiction element of it was pretty fun. The scale of the ships. Dude, and, that's basically Tatooine and they stole the, yeah, I they mean, stole the fuck Star out Wars Tatooine. stole every, no, I'm telling you, Tatooine became what you saw there. I understand, I understand. That motherfucker George Lucas, right, seriously. Okay. Dude, you got to steal from the best, like, I guess. He's that father who we wouldn't, no one would have this if he didn't do it. You act like he betrayed you or something. Well, yeah, with the first, with, with episodes one to three. I mean, especially one and two, okay, but one so to three. So, wait, what, what is George Lucas's greater sin? Episodes one to three or stealing the entire concept? Oh, wow, that, that, that is, uh, I mean, that's why, by the way, that's why... I had been so bad at overrating seven, eight, and then originally nine, but nine sucks. We know nine sucks. But you know what I'm saying? Just in the initial, like seven and eight were like such a revelation because it was just anti George Lucas type bullshit. You Dude, know? nine was the worst. I okay, yeah. Upon I have further ever review, seen. yes, yes, it was. It was very disappointing the way it, oh, uh, oh the way God. it just nosedived and, and just went places that we didn't want it to. But um, man, it's so like George Lucas is like that father that started the family. So you can never take that away from him, but yo, he molested everybody. So you're like, fuck that guy, right? What? I tuned you out halfway. <laughs> I, mean, I tuned. I, sorry. So I drifted off that conversation halfway. Meanwhile, I'm and then what the brought me back was, sleepers, yeah. And, yeah. And what brought me back was, and then he molested all those kids. And I'm like, I'm sorry. What did I miss? <laughs> yeah, in theory, in theory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, I have to say, we'll talk about it for just a second too. The the 
to, in your words, the cinema photography or whatever the fuck you <laughs> said in Dune, it, it's a visual fucking masterpiece. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. A, I, wh- so the guy uh, that oof. did it is the same guy who did Rogue One, bro. So you can see you can, that. Yeah, you can see that. So that's the full Star Wars connection because right when I heard. I was on the fence if I should go to that movie and go to IMAX and whatever. I mean, IMAX is intense, some intense shit. Uh, you want to make sure you're going some, to a movie that you really want to yeah. see. I saw that Invisible Man. And of course movie. you went completely sober. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I went to the Invisible Man in IMAX. And it was just like, it was just, I didn't, I didn't want to be That's there. a little too creepy. Yeah, I, by the end you're like, yeah, I got to get out of here. Um, but, um, you know, what, what would be tangible would be the point of what I was talking about. That's what that would be, it, you know. Uh, anyway, the, I don't the, have the technology I thought was kind of interesting. My favorite piece of the technology, the, the uh, I forget what they called the, the Othnocopters, whatever the fuck they called them. Um, but it was the device they could wear that could essentially shield them. Yes. Um, that was a pretty cool piece of technology. Oh, I was going to say it's, that. It's not original, but the way it was implemented was kind of cool. But the hook was that, oh, that's the Rogue One guy who gave a, who gave Star Wars a completely different look, similar to what that dude did with the Batman movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just was like, oh, shit, we can go in this direction. It could be like a war movie. It could be gritty, but yet, you know, I mean, it's dramatic as shit. Mm-hmm. He, that guy had all fucking home run. Yeah, that guy's doing. good. Mm-hmm. Okay, we need him on, we need him playing JV in the Star Wars universe. Not, 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 a, you know, not the side project. Are you going to watch, we need him, we do you need have him. Disney Plus? Yeah. Are you going to watch the book of Boba Fett? Eventually, probably. I'm not as like, there's people who like, there's a lot of people who blow Boba Fett for being <laughs> a little bit cooler than he is. I mean, that's the problem with Star Wars fans. They're always giving oral to Boba uh, Fett, dude, you know? Bo- and they're like, dude, motherfucking Boba Fett. I'm like, mm, he's not that nice. He's not that, he's okay. He's cool. He's cool. I'm like, you know, he got his shit rocked by hand in the third fi- uh, yeah, the third yeah. movie, like, or whatever, six movies. Yo, movie, when, when, uh, when Han was blind for that stretch in... Uh, on the uh, outdoor, really cold. On the out, no, on the outdoor ship. That was a pretty badass scene with the uh, Sarlacc. Pit. Oh yeah, 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 the Sarlacc. Yeah. You know how nerdy though? was that moment, right? There's you know what? You know, you know what's interesting? I, they uh, they've changed the Sarlacc pit to the old one. Was just like a little bit of a. It was just a little bit of a. What would you call it? Like um, animatronic. Yeah. And now you can't find any version that doesn't have the computer graphic of like the giant tongue coming out. There was a little bit of that one the first time, but they've added to that. Oh, so by the way, the scene is quite different now. George Lucas stole the shit out of that from Dune, bro. Oh, with the worms? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Think about that oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. I golly. Yo, yeah. he stole wow. everything, bro. Yeah. Because those worms in so Dune. So it's like. The way it's, oh, by the way, the way they pull off the worms in Dune is. It, uh, un- unbelievably cool, super cool. Yeah, there's a lot of those like really cool moments where you're like, this this look should be modern Star Wars. Okay, can we get off of this nostalgic yeah. trip and making um you know making Luke a soy boy? What? Luke in like episodes you know seven oh, eight yeah. nine. He's he's kind of a bitch. Dude, kind you of know, like his father as a teenager. Dude, I know. It's like the the real truth about Luke and Anakin. Are two don't of say the, it. Don't say it about the, Luke. I'm no say two okay. of the whiniest pieces of shit. Yeah, everything <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, but Luke Luke fuck redeems. Fuck. And then Yoda's being like, "Yo, shut the fuck <laughs> up, shut the fuck up, and listen to me." He's like, "Yo, you don't know shit. You eight hundred old piece of." <laughs> You 800-year-old piece of shit. What the fuck, dude? You... Yo, what did Aram say to, to Coventer? Shut the <laughs> fuck up, you little prick. <laughs> yeah, prick. <laughs> <laughs> if I still had a radio show, there's this thing called a, um, oh, God, what's it called? Like a Rotation 360 or something. It's the thing that you, if you listen to radio shows, which is, by the way, kind of an old man thing to do and at this point. It's like, oh, because podcasts, they don't really sound the same. Uh, is to get this uh, device, uh, something 360, and then you plug in all the sounds, and then you just hit the drops whenever you want. Yes. Uh, and so, dude, I would get, if I was still had a radio show, I would get, get, I would pull that clip, shut the fuck up, you little prick, and I would play that all the fucking time. Constantly. Hell yeah. Constantly. Yeah. I'm in on that. Um... Anyway, uh, by the way, the so navigation did... of the HBO Max app is the fucking worst. It's the worst app in the internet. Now, how about this, though? It's obvious that Dune 1 is leading to a sequel. Yeah, it was part one, right? No, I get, yeah, I get it. Right. So um, do you have like hope that, that they can keep raising the game? And- I was ready to skip this movie, and then people who uh, whose opinion I, you know, there was enough people that I did not think would say it were saying, like, yo, Dune's pretty good. I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. And it, 
Because the movie exceeded my expectations, I will definitely give part two a, okay. a look. Okay. But if there's like seven parts, and I'm out after two or three. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing all that bullshit. Yo, fuck George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And dude, now I went to uh, Universal Studios down there in Florida, and they got that whole Star Wars city, which, by yes. the way, they actually did a pretty good job with all things considered. It's, it's Disney that has it. Yeah, Disney. Well, I mean, you know, just I understand, but the amount of money he raked in to have yes. produce something that could be sold. I mean, the intellectual property value of Star Wars. What is? It? I, mean, I don't know what it, it has to be in the multi billions. It could not be hotter. I mean, it's, it's just, they're just printing money yes. down there in Florida, printing money. Yeah, and there's all these new cartoons and shows popping up. You know what I mean? You know what you notice? But here's how you know Disney has a lot of money, any number of ways. But like when you physically see the Disney campus space, the once you cross into like especially if you're a European, never been there or something. It's it's like, you know, Florida grassland basically, and once you get to the properties, and especially onto the properties, the the grass is always mowed, always. It's Im impeccably mowed, and you can see where the property begins and ends because that's where everything is properly you know, manicured and curated, and it's a giant space, and the upkeep is significant. Obviously, on just the properties, but then even just the fucking grass. Yeah. And we're talking acre after acre after acre after acre. Never skips a beat. You know how much you have to pay to get that kind of fucking dedicated care? You have to, I mean, that must be millions yes. just for that. Yeah. Shout out to those lawn care workers. <laughs> you know? I just couldn't believe it. I, I, we have, every time I'm getting those, they're like, the real damn, heroes. You fucking yeah. people. Dude, there was no, a time. You sounded like Colby responded to every question with, like, first responders, man, that's great, good shit. Yeah. I know, it's like, Colby, what do you have to say about the racist accusations of you, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I just want to thank the uh, the FY, or the FDNY. Yeah. They're just really the best. And, you know, grandmothers, also grandmothers. They're, who could go wrong with grandmothers? Yo, wasn't Colby in the Marines, too? No, he didn't, sir. I, I just made that shit up? You okay. completely made that up. Right. Jake Ellenberger was a Marine. I don't know why I was thinking that. Jake Ellenberger was. There's been a few. Um, I mean, Tim Kennedy Kyle Kyle was, a, was in what was a major, army. Was an army. army. Yeah, he, he was. was um, he was an absolute badass. He was a and, and remains one. Yes, yes, and remains one. Um, I've, I've had him in studio a couple of times. He's a he's a cool guy. I mean, has, he's got. Has he veered into the psychedelic path for for like? <laughs> I don't know. Has he? No, I'm asking. I don't because know because of the you know he's he's been through some shit you know you would think he would. I don't think I don't think he's into that kind of thing. Okay. I think he's into the kind of health that comes from like <clears throat> hunting, fishing, getting the great outdoors, yeah, you know, being in good shape. So you're friends. saying like Aaron Rodgers, he takes his health kits from <laughs> Joe Rogan? Is that what you're saying? He might. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, Tim Tim's, Tim marches to beat of his own drum, but he might. Um, it has been hard, and I know some, there's some... We just veered off Dune, like, fuck like, it, you were done. Yo, it was George Lucas, dude, I'm telling you. Man. He ruined that shit. Um, that, no you know, it, it, it's hard to be, everyone thinking, oh, UBC trying to keep your, your foot in the UFC game this week, but all y'all care about is Canelo, like, you know, like, you bitch, and like, yo, um, it has been hard to not be on the ground for a card this big, you know, it has yeah. been hard juggling both, but, uh, you know, I've been keeping up, and I'm fired the hell up for that card on Saturday. Yeah, the UFC card is uh, is going to be tr it's going to be a tremendous weekend because the boxing fight's going to be good too. I have a pretty strong feeling it's going to be good, and so just overall high quality combat sports. Yeah. All the right, it was great talking to you. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go to New York right now. I mean, I like New York. I like New York a lot, but. Actually, I like New York more than Vegas, fucking be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, every night it's like, how can I survive Vegas? You know, I don't want to be on the strip, but I'm going to go crazy in my room. So, Luke, I've, I've do I have dove head first because it's back on the Showtime app. Godfather 1. Oh, God. You know, I'm halfway through Godfather 2, and on the Showtime app I watched Carlito's Way for the first time. Hold on. Oh, One shit, man. Oh, before we transition, you were at the IMAX. We can go right back to the Godfather and whatever. What was your snack of choice? What is your go-to at the movie theater? Uh, raisinets, <laughs> <laughs> which is badass. You, you country no, pumpkin. No, dude. Man, these raisins <laughs> got sugar on them. No, that's, that is you the... You fucking but, but with, pumpkin. But with the large icy, though. Okay, with the large oh cherry my. icy. Uh, yeah, yo, yo, fuck your popcorn, you know? Dude, yo, motherfucker, just put that sugar right in my motherfucking eyeball. <laughs> what? <laughs> Golly. Yes, I'll just have your Splenda packets. I want you to bukkake me in the face with, with all of your oh, with wow. all of your Splenda. Yeah. 
Just yeah. sugar and sugar tasting thing. Jesus Christ, you got no, you don't do the sweet and savory thing, nothing? No. You animal, you animal. No. I mean, you can't make me take on your customs. You, there, there's been you know I mean? a lot of studies around uh, like the neural pathways of sugar consumption and whatnot go with animals and shit. So there's a lot of animal tests where it's like, oh, we'll give them water and then water that's like, put sugar in there and see which ones they prefer. Those bitch ass animals, they, they go, they'll taste the sugar water and be like, mm, me oh fuck regular water. <laughs> this water is the shit. Oh, uh, Luke, that's you. You're that fucking, you're that hamster that, that goes, oh shit, sugar water. Damn, um, that I, must be, that's, I'm just gonna have this I'm the rest very, of my life. I'm very insulted by that. Definitely. Um, so wait, if I told you, and I haven't been to the movie, I literally haven't been to the movie since the pandemic. I've not gone. So, uh, but if I go, the move for me is giant Coke Zero. I love Coke Zero. Okay, you, you don't have to like that part. Whatever. <laughs> Coke Zero. Okay. okay. And so if it's me and my wife, one of us gets the popcorn, and then the other one I would get something Latin coming up. No, 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 no. Reese's Pieces, maybe something like that. Okay. Um, what do you think about that combo? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay, you know? You could get by on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you just go out there and just, like, snort stevia. No, no, no. Um, I was trying to think what I, uh, not nah, whatever. I was trying to think of what, I, what I've been over, what I've been eating this week. I just can't stop eating candy, all right? What's up with candy, then? I don't know. It's just keeping me sane this week, you know? I can't stop. You're nervous, but I, but you're I, nervous eating. You're eating to solve your... Yeah. Yes, my my. I just want to be home, you know. But this is the job. You got to bite down. You got to fight. Okay, the ten days. Do you want to tell the folks the? This good... is like going through an obstacle, like game show or something. Do you want to tell the folks the good news about one of your uh, pets? Yes, Molly the dog. You know, my my ride or die. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> your ride or die, bitch. Yeah. Um, I can say that. Um, Get yeah, it? there were, there was a tense couple days with her health wise, but. Uh, it turns out no cancer, nothing crazy. She's only four. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. So when you get that, when you get that shit, when you get that good news, you know what Dude, I mean? It's I just, feel good for you, man. I yeah. know, that's great. That's yeah. great. Good it's news Because it's a child. You know, it's not an, it's not an animal. Bro, I get it, child. man. I get it. I'm not one of these people that's like, someone's like, I've seen people being like, oh, X called into work and can't come in because their cat died. People are like, that's bullshit. They should be here. I'm like, well, it's inconvenient, but I, I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's, a, and also like people are like, you're supposed to mourn dogs more than you mourn cats. That's kind of like an unwritten rule. You're not allowed to be like as sad about it. Um, but if a dog passes, you know, it'll fuck people up. Some people, I mean, I see some people, it feels like 70% of this country just hates cats. Just hates them. You think it's 70? It's Every, nice. Everyone I talk to is just like, fuck cats. I think if people get a wrong, I, the, I don't know what the number is. I, I do agree that the majority. I don't yeah. know if it's 70. I mean, but, what, what but, happened but here's, to people, Well, here's you know? the thing, dude. It's like, who hurt you, right? <laughs> cats. That's the part. That's the thing. Cat owners, like people who hate cats, shit on cats. Cat owners also shit on cats. So you can get like a skewed perspective about how many people actually hate cats. You don't shit on cats when they just dart, dart across the room for no fucking I mean, they reason do and a knock lot, shit yeah, over. Yeah, they do a lot of bullshit. There's when they no smash question. you and you know, all kinds of stuff and they yeah. hiss and whatever the fuck. They would do. I mean, they start opening the blinds at like they, 4 a.m. Dude, yeah. Moco used to eat our mail. Yeah. I'd bring the mail in, and I'd look over, and he'd just be fucking chowing into it, like, ripping it to pieces. Like, dude, these are my fucking bills. <laughs> what, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Yo, Booger's so reckless. I love that shit. Uh, dude, rest in peace, Booger. I never told you this story. So one time, my wife and I went on vacation, and uh, I ha we haven't had stray cats in the neighborhood in a while. I don't know if it's just a luck or the city's collecting them or whatever. But when I first lived in that neighborhood years ago, we're talking, like, 10 or, no, more than that, like 15 years or so, or so ago in this neighborhood. It was not the neighborhood that it is now. And we used to have stray cats. My wife moved in uh, however long ago when she was my girlfriend at the time. And uh, there was this cat that would kind of come around, but then you couldn't catch it. And it was always, you know, it's hard to leave food because then they'll stick around. But we try to give it something on the side of the road, whatever. I come back from uh, vacation and he was dead as shit on my lawn. Oh, no. <laughs> okay? Oh. I mean, completely, completely oh. fucking dead. And I'm like, uh. what the fuck? <laughs> like, and mind, mind you, he had shat and puked in the lawn before he croaked. And I feel bad, it's a street animal, but what am I, I, mean, I didn't I mean, do it. I mean. So hold on, so he's, there's this dead ass animal in my yard. This sucks. And I'm like, dude, this fucking blows. So I call the city to come collect. They're like, sir, we're not walking on your property. You gotta collect it and move it off the property and then we can schedule for it to come collect it, but you gotta go get it. I'm like, mother. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're the worst pet ever. 
I never got a chance to bond with you, and then you just died on me. It's like the like you know, you just clean up my mess, bitch. <laughs> it's like you were never my pet. Why am I doing this for you? So, dude, I'm trying to collect this thing, and I've never handled like a dead cat before, and so I try to pick it up by its tail. Yeah. I had gloves on. I try to pick it up by its tail, and the cat slides <laughs> through my hand, and all the hair comes off as it like. Collapses back to the ground. Now I've got a fistful of hair from a dead cat. And I'm like, dude, this is going from bad to f <laughs> fucking way worse. Yeah, this is like a scene in Half Baked or something. Instantly. Yeah. So I finally had to get like a you know collect it in this bag and dump it in another bag and and I got it out to the front and then I put it in a box and I sealed the box and I fucking told the city to come get it. Anyway, man, you know yeah. that, that's not really representative of cats more generally. But that no. was one time I was like, yo, fuck cats. I had a dead. Uh, a Canadian goose in my yard, and it was like one of those really tall ones. Those things are huge. They're, they're massive, and it was like in front of my front door, <laughs> dead. And I called the town, and they were like, "You know, we don't really do that if you can put it out with your trash." And so the trash was <laughs> trash day was the next day, and dude, like, I wanted dude, no dignity nothing for to do death. with this dead thing. So I had to take a couple shovels and mount it up, and then just run with it as fast as I could, and just launch it to the edge of the road. Okay, so trash day was the next day. And overnight, some animal came, took it from the road, dragged it back into my yard, and then tore it into, like, a million pieces. I mean, it was just, like, the worst thing ever to wake up to after, you you know. And it's like, dude, was there a, a, fu a fucking series of sacrifices here? <laughs> so here's what made it even worse. Fuck. Um, I put it back together and then had to shovel oh. it back to the edge of the road. Oh. And somebody came, saw it on the side of the road, Put their car in park, went and examined it, and like with their bare hands, was like going through the guts. What were they? What were they gonna do with it? I and then they decided that. to leave it there. I know, that is fuck it. Well, you sure it wasn't some other animal? Like no, there was a human that pulled up in a car and got out with their hands and was like going through it as if it's like, oh, you know, you can I got, bounce that you shit got or something? You got, I mean, you got weird ass neighbors, bro. You got weird. I mean, ass it wasn't neighbors. like my neighbor, but you know, it was uh, somebody drove. That is there. funny. Yeah. That is fucking hilarious. Now, I've never had a big ass, like, bird of prey or some shit, but that fucking cat, I was, it's like, I gotta come back on my vacation to this bullshit. Yeah. Like, you know, my wife's like, I'm not getting that. You are. In a way, I'm, I was like, yo, fuck. Yo, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But I was gonna say, I also, like, the other part too was, I realized that there was a time in my life I only mowed my lawn before big boxing fights because that was the only time I'd have guests over. And so I just wait until I have like a bunch of people coming over and I have to mow my fucking lawn. Oh, how wait you and be like a degenerate with like the grass this high? Or oh yeah, dude. Like when I like you, you were that dude who people assumed that there was like a dead body inside. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like I don't kidding? know. I don't know if they made assumptions about corpses. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, but I know people were pissed at me for a while. But I got better about it. and I didn't do it anymore. But there was, a, there was like a couple of years. I was just like, I just I didn't give a fuck. Like I was like, it didn't even. This is very similar to how your beard evolved. A little bit, but it was like, I didn't, it, there was, it's weird, but I I, I I mowed the yard as a kid, like a lot, but I don't know, as a, as a when, this is my first real home that I ever owned, and uh, I just, I just didn't care. Who were your Armenian heroes as a child? What? There was no, like, Armenian no, heroes my mom, or, like, my mom didn't really... athletes or, or actors, because you rep Columbia hard right now, so you're like, oh, that, BC, that guy, that boxer's coach is Columbia, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, you because, don't... dude, my, my in-laws hit me up about certain boxers that are Columbia, and they're like... Yo, I just want to see Armenia get that respect, and... Armenia your, gets that respect. And your real home country that you're dodging right now. Dude, I'm not doing a bit... I get so many people that DM me, and all they do is send me links of like news stories about India, and they're like, "Yo, please forward to Luke." <laughs> I mean, like, it's just. Are you shitting me? I'm not kidding, dude. People are like, "Yo, why does Luke have to just turn his back on his home nation like that?" You'll get fucking. I'm not joking, okay? His home nation. Okay. Yo, why do you have to George Lucas them like that? Why do I, why do I have to George Lucas India, dude? I I was there for six months. That's it. I don't know shit about India. All right. All right. You know. Sorry, but I don't. But no, my mom was not very good about teaching. Um, what about your dad? About, um, what's your way. dad? German or some shit? English? My dad grew up in Oklahoma. <laughs> so what is he? Like some. Oklahoma, Irish? boy, that's a state that. He's Native American? If I never go to. What is his family? Can you imagine ancestry? him being like, damn, man, I just, you know, before I died on my deathbed, I just never saw Tulsa. No, no one's ever fucking said that. So what is he? English? 
I guess um, my dad, I haven't never verified this, my dad told me that the name is Anglo-Saxon and um, it means like the, the Latin origin would, of Thomas would be twin. Yeah, but where are your people from? I don't know what the fuck you're asking. You mean like, what does my 23 and me say? You, 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 what's your dad's fam family line origin? Dating back to, I think, England. Yeah, that, it, what we, we took way too long to get you yeah, to England, answer that. Yeah, England, England. Yeah, just, that's what I was, a very England. basic question, yeah. But it's like a pretty, it's pretty far apart, like, there's there numerous generations between yeah. uh, what my dad showed up to and the original English who came over or whatever it was. Yo, the dinosaurs destroyed your dad's old people, I'm <laughs> telling you, yo. They won that war with fucking lasers. <laughs> they had no chance against them. Um, what else is going on in the world? Of in, of note. Um, I think that's that's it. You know, it's not Dude, we are we were gonna phone it in after thirty minutes <laughs> <laughs> for real. Um, dude, people get bitter with like that we're not more enthusiastic about this, but dude, you gotta understand something. Drinking drinking just kills us. It just well we it, did a lot of content for this week. Yeah, but we, also dude, the drinking murders us at this point. Yeah, but we did it in advance, and we've been doing shit all week. I know, like we went all in on this and. In, in a lot of ways, and we did get lucky. We have to be thankful too. Like I thought for sure one of those injuries was going to kill one of those fights, and they all held. We recorded that shit weeks ago. The Chuck that. rooftop week, yeah, 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 weeks ago, weeks ago. We were just like, well, better hope. No and, one gets injured. Yeah, and watch our shit. You know, watch that resume review. Watch that pregame preview with Canelo with Andreas Hale, and that was a lot of people in that lobby. It was a little daunting off the start, yeah, but bro. once those people realized what was really going on, yo, they got the hell out of it. We there. got booed. Yeah, we did. We got booed. literally booed by some people in the in the lobby. They were very kind. Some tourists who brought, probably brought COVID. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe in COVID. <laughs> Just because they didn't like our show, or they thought Canelo was gonna. Well, be I mean, you know, you, you have to boo. You didn't have to. I didn't ask you to like it. Yo, Andre, Shit, I didn't even ask you to watch. Yo, look into that camera though, and talk to Andreas Hill. Did he bitch out on that on that frozen drink, or was it that that no, red? He made dye the right. Would, fuck that. Yeah, he that made the right call. That, that shit killed. sucked, dude. Yeah, yeah. That, was that shit show. sucked. I can't believe, I dude. I used to love, and I mean, it was my number one go to in life. Drinking. <laughs> People used to be like, it's sad to drink alone. I'm like, dude, it fucking is aw it's like, There's, there's, you can be alone. What's, what's better, being alone sober or alone hammered? It's way better to be alone hammer time. I used to be like, like as Doug Stanhope says, I like to take any of my problems and then just pour alcohol on top. It makes anything yeah, better. But yeah. then, you know, dude, it like it, now it. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm, I can't, it doesn't work. It kills me. Yeah, it fucks me up. Yeah, that's true. Luckily, there's still real men out there like Chuck Mendenhall, you know? He can booze a little bit. He can booze a little bit. Um, um, hey, it was good to see Mike Tyson today. He looked very healthy. Yep. At the weigh-in. He looked like he was jacked as shit. Um, Yo, Mike Coppinger was talking his ear off. I was that's like, what, that's what know, Mike Coppinger does. Shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> you little prick. <laughs> yeah, prick. That 89-year-old fucking Tasmanian <laughs> devil, dude. He's 89, and he's just stealing on Yo, people. we got a great Bob Arum story that we could tell probably after he passes, but yes. this week we got yes. a great one. We oh. have a really, really great yeah. <laughs> Bob Arum We should do a Patreon, a Patreon pod yes. just for the Bob Arum Dude, story. Dude, oh, I would sell tickets to that. Oh, okay. oh that was a good one. We saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> when you told me what was happening, you know what I mean? I thought you were like, you're absolutely doing a bit. You were absolutely doing, and I was gonna, you know, and I was gonna see something that was some parody of what you were trying to actually say. No, I'll, I'll leave know, it at I, that. I tend to come and then through, it was fucking know? true, and I was like, holy mother of God, how fortuitous this meeting is. Um, we love you, Bob. Um, good shit, good shit. You know, that's all, that's about all I got. I mean, what, this, do, you know, what, what do you want me to do? You know, you want me to do the... the... Hold on, well, no, we don't have to go just yet. You want to talk about anything else in the show that you like or don't like? About our show? Yeah. Well, let's have a conversation yeah, the about the show. co-host. I mean, come <laughs> on. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I set myself up for that one. Yeah, That's good. Yeah. Um, yo, our show is um, it's a little bit different, but Luke, it's I, don't even, it's I don't even know if you know. 
what this show is. I right? guess uh, not in the way that you want me to, I guess. I mean, I want I want you to know this show intimately, Luke, okay? Biblically. Okay? Yeah. Are we going to this Jake Paul presser tomorrow? I have not heard. No one's told me anything about it. M me neither, all right? All right. I don't really want to go. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We had a good run, you know? <laughs> <laughs> How desperate are you to get home? Yeah, pretty desperate. Yeah, pretty desperate. You know, I never understood how, like, all the people that would be there for Radio Row for the big boxing fights, they never stay for the fight. And I was just always like, what is wrong with you? You're going there for the fight. You're not going to stay, for, you know? And I get it, like, in a sense, like, they're not getting ringside seats so, so like the point, yeah. they'd have to be in a media room or whatever for the most part but you know everyone's just like I, I can't wait to get the hell out of there after i put in the work you know and when you do an extended fight week which which we basically did um when you're when you're working on wednesday and doing significant things that's a big ass fight week to me you know yes i mean you've been doing it since tuesday yeah yeah so um yeah the finish line's coming and i'm gonna you know yeah big week though okay big week luke yeah, it was a big week. Uh, and there was we're Bellator coming. today, too. We're coming. Are we, when are we going to get uh, back into the studio, you think? Uh, I think pretty soon, because this month? we had an important meeting today. Was it today, yesterday? One of these days. Luke. Oh, it was yesterday. We had an important set design meeting to, yeah. to finalize some shit, you know? Yeah, but how long, how long is that shit going to take? I don't know, but, you know, I will tell you that we're, like, yo, like, we're common. The rest of this industry, they better know we're coming. Because yeah. the industry was basically like, if you're gonna, you know, if you're, if you're coming on, then then come on. And I was thinking about the MMA media at that presser yesterday, because today's Friday. Yeah. It's like, dude, that, that like that's a sign about like how the MMA media has really split in so many ways. Like, you know, I don't know how to explain this exactly, but it has split in into places where the people who used to do those roles don't anymore. And then there's a certain kind of, there's always been like the traveling crew that did that. Mm -hmm. But um, now there's a lot of people who have removed themselves from that process and it sort of gets, it's a little bit, I wanna put it this way. It certainly, for many people would be, uh, I don't know how to explain this exactly. I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Uh, you made that way more dramatic than it probably would be. No, but I'm trying to, I'm try, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it was, there was, did it not occur to you watching that, that like, MMA media has changed? Yes. Right, so okay, so what would your answer be to why it changed? I can't quite articulate myself um, properly right now, but. <clears throat> um, would you say the, the, the threat that you could get credentials pulled or that you can go down that road by being a real journalist and taking chances and being an aggressive. Do you think that has like kind of watered down and moved some people out? Like the, just the threat of, okay, if I go down that road and still try to sit, you know, cage side, like do you, th I think that's just kind of. I think it's a combination of the model changing. Like, it's the, kind like of the actual on, business it's, model. It's disarmed the media to a degree, but also by, by just being, an aggressive threat in there, it opened the door for those brand pro entertainers to come in. And I'm not against the people that are outright like, this is entertainment, I'm part of the entertainment, that, you know, I'm advantageous to use this platform. But I mean, did you see the guy who did the Chad Johnson betting thing on there? He basically read a commercial, you know, with like a website to go to. So he yeah. used his question completely to like sell his own shit, shit yeah. you know? And, um, it's obviously a, at a shit show level now, yeah, but, the Moss but you always Tina. talk about it. It's like, that's what Dana would prefer. And the real, real yeah, journey. Do they really want that? I don't know if they want that in the way, uh, maybe they do. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know what they want. But you already know. know, if you want to be a real, 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 real journalist, you're, yeah. you're going to be on the outside looking in. Yeah, know? the people, it just seems to me that like, I don't want to say that the questions asked on that, of those things aren't always together unfair. In fact, I think the people like, who constantly do that have a kind of rapport with Dana where, you know, over time they basically get the information from him that they want, and they, you know, they have, they also have to manage relationships in ways that we don't. But like, you know, the entire cast of people who would ever be adversarial in ways that I would, I'm arguing, not like to be combative, but to be, you know, to press powerful people for important information, 
are completely removed from this process now. Yeah. They have no footprint at all in those, and there used to be more of that. Yeah. Um, it's it, so in that case, it's in. But there sense. are plenty of MMA media who are doing critical stuff, just not in that role. So I guess what I'm saying is that role has changed a little bit. Um, there's like a press corps in, in a more traditional sense than there ever has been. It used to be a little bit more back and forth, give and take. But that doesn't mean the the, the entire business is neutered. I just think no, people no, have to, what I'm saying. People have to pick their spots better, and they do, and they're more selective. Yeah, that spot is not the place that people do it, apparently. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I guess there's been a collective choice where if you're going, and it's not just them that's done it, all the rest of us have done it. There's a collective choice that's been made where if you're going to get... Dude, but I don't blame them. Like, I still believe this. I don't have any problem with the way they run those pressers, but they're not pressers, dude. Yeah. If you're going to have fans, fine, have the fans. Then let them ask the questions. Let them ask the questions. If you want to have a press conference, then the press should be there. Period. That's the end of it. I, I, don't, either, either it's I, a pep no, rally or it's not. I argue that, though, because... It's incredibly entertaining when when I'm working it Dude, when I'm wa when I'm watching it from a, a distance. That's a, that's a that's a UFC concern. That's not your concern. I'm if just you're doing saying the, that, if like, if you're doing the job effectively and appropriately, sure. that has nothing to do with you. That has nothing to do with you. The job is to go there and ask questions that are important to. I'm not. I'm not saying. You, I'm just saying it, there's a chance it could be a little bit more of both. I understand what the appeal is. I'm not confused about that. What I guess I'm trying to point out is if you're doing a true journalistic job, that is. Utterly irrelevant. Utterly irrelevant. I, but I, you know, you can. I don't think you know where the you know where the state of the industry is now. You can do a true journalistic job, but you've got it. There's also so many ties and you know tie-ins with promotion. I mean, that you know everyone's compromised to a certain degree in certain areas. Uh, I mean, I think there are limits on anything you can do and say, even in the places where you have control over your own platforms, like YouTube or whatever. Um, and practical limits that you should say and things like that. There are things that inform your judgment. I don't ever really lie. Um, if that's what you're... Are you implying that we lie? We don't, I don't ever lie. No. Yeah, no. okay. There's just... There's, you know, and then there's a lot of situations. Where, I mean, and, like, I, and I can't be told, like, what to say. It's just never going to happen. Um, but, um, yeah, no, no. I, it's, it, listen, everyone's got a, a, you know... If you work for ESPN, you have to, to a degree, it doesn't matter who you are, on some level, you can't be too far against their values, otherwise it won't work there. Like, you have yeah. to carry that a little bit. Same for us here at CBS, slash Showtime on occasion, or any, any outlet you might have. Any of those pressures are real, and people feel them, and I think people understand that. I guess I'm just pointing out, I watched that presser, and I was like, dude, like, it just, it was, it has not always been like that, let me tell you. It's a circus. It's a circus. It just so happened that this one. But to your point, it was fucking. This it, one this week was, was like the first fun one I remember in a while. And it used to be that. Yeah. I mean, there was, be, be, be real here. There was that stretch, and it coincided with Connor's uh, boom, where these became like events, like if entertainment events. For sure. I, don't you remember the Nate Diaz tour that they did? When they when he filled in on short notice and they went to that gym, mm -hmm. that was the one where he made the balloon animal zing, which was one of Connor's better zings that you haven't seen that shit in forever. But or even the the BMF one, even though that wasn't a great press conference because neither one really wanted to stir the pot, mm -hmm. Nate or Jorge. Oh, on the bridge, the, the look if it felt they killed grand, it, they it felt killed it. they you know, killed it like New York. You yeah, know? like that. I wish we had almost yeah. oh, like McGregor Habib or something in that setup. You know? Yeah, yeah. And then Jorge came out to that <clears> um, Al Pacino. Um, Scarface yes, which, which was very cool. Were you at the Radio City Music Hall um, Connor Habib press conference? No, oh, I, I watched was, it live. I was. That was you were um, inside? Yeah, that was... Dude, what was that like? It was intense as shit because it was completely guarded with police all the way around. There was like an insane amount of police presence, like insane. So, you know, remember last minute they decided no fans. Right. So it was just media, and I think it was even just selected. Like it was, you know, very, like... Core media, not, not all the media gets invited. Yeah, yeah. core media, and um, there were there were not a ton of us media wise. But when you get there, you get the full pat down as if you're like about to meet the president. I mean, it was like intense, and and if you leave, you can't come back. Like there was like some of those like extra extra levels of, um, and then you know you remember how batshit intense that that and was. Connor I mean, Connor was, was on rabid. Another level, yeah. He was that in that was a that was a wild ride in person. That was that was a. Uh, it was. A, I, won't, I don't want to call it theater because it wasn't all joyous. It was. It was a grimy part of it, but it was. It was an experience. Yeah, I can imagine. I don't think I've seen a presser. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a presser that got like out of hand. Boxing presses are interesting because they let in. These people have giant entourages, dude. Canelo's entourage. 
it must have been seventy five people. Yeah, it's I not mean, Pacquiao level, but it's it's it's, it's a, significant. <coughs> yeah, like yeah. way more than what you see from even high level rich MMA fighters. Way bigger crews. Way bigger. And everyone's got like their secretaries and 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 uh, family members come along and oh my god it's like an endless parade. Uh, obviously he makes sh- shit tons of money, so good for him. But it's a lot of people. Um, okay, let's say you and I and it wasn't set up this way, but let's say there was like a, f- a caught in an elevator situation or caught somewhere, and it's you, me, and Canelo forced to hang out for two hours. Now we think we don't know the time. Like we're like oh shit, I hope they can get us out of here but we're stuck together and it's just the three of us so at first it's just like yo hey what's up but then you know after like I would uh, tell him in Spanish that you're a heavy bag and (laughs) if you need to get stole on but after like you know 20 minutes you're gonna start talking to each other and then you're gonna be after a while you're gonna be like divulging and hanging and you're in this weird spot where you're like stuck in an elevator at the end of those two hours would he be like yo like would he like ah and Barack us and be like, yo, let's hang out later and like, yo, or would it, or would we, you know, we would never talk to him again. He'd be really kind to us at future events. He's not giving us that's his phone too, number. That's too much time with us, as you're saying. Yeah, like no, it's like just, we no, actually hook quite, him quite into... the opposite. We would have to be stuck in there like a week for him to be <laughs> like, for him to be like, I'm gonna give my fucking number to these two idiots. <laughs> Who wouldn't stop farting? And I don't crying. know. Like after an hour, we would get to bro level. We would no, have to. No, we no, no, no. Have, have you ever been stuck in an elevator? No, but I think I could break down. I, I got think, stuck in another elevator one time. I think I can it, get inside. It, it, of it sucks. Yo, I think I can get inside on him though. I th- dude, I think that's so. Just to be, you're like, I would double leg yo, Canelo. I've had some failures of interviews. You know that. We, we joke about it. I mean, I've had. We've all had them. Where you just. Oh yeah. I've where had, you I've want had, it to be great, and it's it it's just, just sucked. Yep. But dude, I go there. Going all in, throwing myself at the interview. I want, I want to make this shit happen. You know what I mean? I mean, I just want. Oh, to. he'd give you an interview. He'd give you an interview. He would do that, dude. He's really nice. Right? Well, to the extent that I've ever interacted with him, he's always been friendly with me. I like Canelo. He's easy to work with. I'm saying, um, I look at every interview like I can get inside on him. All right. I looked at Floyd. I'm like, watch. I'm about to get inside. Dude, how do you not watch like psychological thrillers? You seem like a guy who would love that kind of shit. You're like, yo, you, you're a little crazy. Well, a little more than that. You're also a little, you know, brain damaged. <laughs> but <laughs> yo, that's my BDE just, just coming <laughs> off. That is. Uh, you, you don't like that shit, like FBI profilers and stuff like that. I mean, I should probably get into that stuff more. I don't, because I'm very... Dude, You're always I'll, like, hey, yo, I'll watch this documentary about fucking squirrels. For a show to hook me, like, like it's... Word? Like, I want to quit in the beginning part. Like, right now, Billions, they got me. They got me, you know, so it's good. But, like, I'm always looking to quit, and um, I don't Yo, I know that. that. I see your commitment issues. <laughs> but, well you know documented. what I... But from my jump from Godfather to Carlito's way, now I'm going back on the old Pacino library, not the ones we've all seen, but those like in between 70s, neo-noir, like crime, like, you know, dark, like, just, that was some fancy words to just say some badass movie that I've never seen. There was good seen. movies in the 70s too. Yeah, and they're, they're gritty as shit. Super you know? fucking, dude, the, the mid to late 70s, and I could be wrong about that, but that's just what it feels like for me, gritty ass movies. Also, dude, 91, 92, yeah, hardcore yeah. gritty ass movies. Unforgiven around then, you know that was. Yeah, that Predator was... Two, which was a stupid movie but gritty. Yeah. Um, American, what was it called that one that I saw? Uh, My American Life, with uh, Edward James Olmos. I never saw that. Jesus, that one. There was stabbings and rapes. I thought and... you were gonna say American History X. That, that's... that's another one, but that was not early. Yo, 90s. when that mo- what was that that movie? Uh, the college one. There was a lot of race tension. Uh, John Singleton, I think. Oh, Higher Education? Yes, when that shit came out, dude, that was fucking, like, in, like, that was tough to watch. You know, that shit was, um, like, you wanted to throw up when he came out of the theater after that. There was just so much, like, they nailed the racial tension. Like, they nailed that with that, um, with Ma- Michael Rappaport as just that skinhead, oh, yeah. like, freak. And, like, you know, that movie was, um, that was intense. Michael Rappaport. You don't remember that shit? I, I I have seen the movie, but it was so it's long disturbing. ago. It's disturbing. I mean, it's rightfully disturbing. It's supposed to be disturbing, but it's um it's intense as shit, Luke. Right. Fuck that movie. Yo, fuck George Lucas. All right, <laughs> that's it. Uh, what time is it? Hold on. Yeah, we're done. All right. You, um, can't, you can't keep me here. This podcast is really falling falling apart. Uh, <laughs> it's just being hung together. Oh, you can't even put it up to your stupid mouth. Say goodbye to the, to the people who watch. 
Thank you very much for watching yeah. our stuff. Um, it's been a busy week, and if you've been with us the whole way, thank you for checking out all the bonus. And um, what, a, what a weekend of great fights, Luke. Look at us. Yeah. Two of us. Look at us. Right? I'm going to go enjoy some no, devil's no, lettuce. No, 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 <laughs> no. Bye. <laughs>